All investments and asset classes have their tribes, and they are often very obvious and outspoken on social media channels. Those who are physical precious metal bullion bulls are no different. Over the last handful of years, for instance, I've seen this how much silver have you stack chart essentially posted around various online silver stacker forums. Now, if you simply think it through, it's obviously done in jest. The numbers and scales have no meanings in reality. It's all for fun, in other words. But it is human nature, also a common fallacy, to consistently compare oneself to others. Never mind that we all have different goals in our lives other than sole wealth accumulation, or that we're likely at different stages in our lifetimes. Still, it's normal to wonder about your net wealth position compared to others. It's also interesting to wonder what this data may end up looking like if the underlying fiat currency that we're going to use as the measurement stick goes really wrong ahead. Last week a viewer on this SD Bullion channel asked and I figured it would be an interesting thought experiment so today we're going to go down a rabbit hole of bullion stack sizes in proportion to one's liquid net worth and wealth class. This will be data driven so get ready. You may want to blow out your screen sizes and hit pause whenever the information is super interesting to you. It has been for me. All source links will be in the show notes so you can rabbit hole further if you like. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SDBullion.com. Before we get all nerdy with the data, do me a favor, smash the like button below. Doing this is going to help other like-minded bullion interested viewers to see this information too. Now, a couple of disclaimers before we get going in earnest. First, if you've purchased any bullion at all already, congrats, you're well ahead of the majority of U.S. citizens who have no precious metals bullion exposure at all. Most of the data here is compiled using the basing Fiat Federal Reserve note measuring stick, so if what people erroneously call the U.S. dollar goes to inflationary floor, much of this data is going to change. But by using prudent bullion allocation percentage, we can at least garner an idea of how many ounces one might need to be considered a whale per your wealth class. So how will we define lower, middle, and upper classes in the United States in 2021? Well, to simplify, we're going to have to do a few things. For instance, we're going to have to focus in on age. The median age of this channel is about 45 years old. It ranges all over though. We have people who watch this who are younger than 25 and people who watch this channel who are above 65. But if you look for the center sweet spot, uh, we're going to use 45 years old as the median on any page where age is involved. And given the extreme wealth disparity ongoing in the USA, to begin we're going to set the top percentile uh, of percentile high net worth billionaire class to the side so they don't skew the data and the hard truths ongoing. But then again, a little bit later, we're also going to take a deeper dive into that highest net worth class so we can understand how little in bullion they have yet to this date and how much potential mega capital could be flowing into the precious metal sector this decade to come. Let's make sure we all understand the key difference between average, median, and define what net worth means. A person's net worth is a sum of their assets subtracted by their liabilities. This data is from Visual Capitalist website for the year 2019. Median literally means the middle figure of the data population when put in order from smallest to largest or vice versa. It's literally the center data point of the entire data pool. Average data can skew the understanding of a data set when there are large outliers, like for instance many fiat hundred billionaires in the data sets. Here we can see how skewed things get in terms of average versus median net worth for the 45-54 year old age group. And here you can see it on a larger scale. It's a massive difference between a seemingly somewhat comfortable retirement being in view versus a situation where you had better get saving and soundly investing fast. Now we're going deeper. Press pause if you want to study your age range and the data further. What we are looking at here is select net worth by age in year 2020 in USA. Data is provided by our private central bank. We have our 45 to 54 year old bracket highlighted and the 75 percentile of that group, what I would define as middle class, currently has about 450 grand in net worth. 
Now, it's most likely most of that net worth is caught up in their home's equity. And that is generally where most Americans have their wealth. It's in the house that they've purchased or the real estate they own. But as we look towards the 90th percentile, which I would still define as middle class, merely upper middle class, they have about 1.3 million in net worth. Now on this channel, the SD Bullion website, I published a study and talked about multiple times uh, in terms of uh, the prudent allocation of bullion versus other asset classes and what percentage makes sense. Obviously, this is a personal decision, but there's been studies that have been done and in terms of uh, one's liquid net worth outside of their private business interests or their home or domicile's equity, especially when living under a full fiat currency regime, there's good data for this. And it shows that an allocation to bullion versus U.S. bonds in the S&P 500 index from 1968 until 2016, the best risk reward percentage of bullion has been well higher than the typical 10% people often say without real examination publicly on financial media channels. Actually, the data shows 25% gold bullion from 1968 to 2016 was the right risk reward for that entire stretch of time. Now, obviously, uh, there's a lot of people here who think that silver has extreme value and so does platinum at these current price levels. And so you one might consider what mix they're going to use. But for instance, when we when we talk about this throughout this entire video, I'm just going to use a 20% bullion allocation. And the assumption is I'm not mixing or commingling people's real estate and or private business interests into this. I'm simply talking about the liquid net worth outside of those two classes of assets. Now we're again back on that 2020 USA net worth percentile data provided by our private central bank of the nation, the private Federal Reserve. Since I've given you the prudent percentage of bullion held while living under a full fiat currency regime, I'm not going to sit here and break down what each person in the lower, middle, and upper middle class should be doing in terms of ounce acquisitions to achieve a, a supposed whale status within each. I think that would be kind of boring and, and frankly distasteful. Rather, we're going to focus in on the upper 1% high net worth skew intentionally left out of this data so as not to skew the reality for the 99% of US citizens that you see here. And also, we're gonna look at how tiny both the current, collective, and as well the highest net worths precious metals investment allocations remain as recent as last year 2020 the data but first just some historical context this chart shows gold investments as a percentage of global financial assets over many decades data is provided by CPM group while the data is not updated uh, to 2021 and even with gold having nearly doubled since late 2015 likely towards later this year I'm going to assume even if gold does go to new record nominal price highs by the end of 2021, we're still going to be below 1% in terms of total global asset share of gold investments. Gold's going to have to run towards a high four or five figure per troy ounce price point before it starts threatening the 1980 2.74% share of global financial assets here. In other words, there's a long way to go and gold is historically still cheap versus other asset classes values at the moment. Now on the silver side, this chart gets even more ridiculous. We're in the year 2021, and perhaps by the end of this year, we'll have a run towards $50 an ounce silver, and if we do percentage share wise, we'll likely still be lower than that tiny 2011 figure you see here. Silver will have to run to multiple triple digits in value to threaten the old 1980 percentage of global financial asset allocations. So again, here we can see two things. Silver is laughably tiny as an asset class, and it has a huge runway potential ahead, especially if the underlying fiat currency goes real wrong. The following data points and definitions are provided by the 2020 report of Knight Frank, one of the world's largest global property consultancies based out of London since 1896. They state that it is compiled by research teams around the world. Wealth Report is Knight Frank's flagship thought leadership product publication. Now in its 15th edition, the report has become a highly anticipated document that is considered vital reading for ultra high net worth investors across the globe and their advisors, highlighting the issues that matter to them the Wealth Report is the ultimate guide to prime property markets, global wealth distribution, the threats and opportunities for wealth, commercial property investment opportunities, philanthropy, and luxury spending trends. Unquote. 
According to them, globally speaking, an ultra high net worth individual is someone with a net worth of over 30 million Fiat Fed notes. That includes their primary residence in that figure. Globally speaking as well, a high net worth individual is someone with a net worth of over a million, including their prime residence. Here you can see that while North America, specifically the USA, leads the world by the end of 2019 with over 240,000 individuals with net worths of over 30 million, Asia, specifically China, is hot on their tails. Shortly I will show you other time-ranging data confirming this statement. Here you can see that white and pink nations are where most of the heavy wealth accumulation will be happening over the next five years, according to this 2020 report. This page entitled Where the Wealthy Live is super interesting too. The problem here is that many of you are watching this video on a smartphone. No chance you can read that data. Even if you're on a desktop and blow it out, I'm not sure you can. If any of this is of interest to you, hit the show notes and find the link for the Knight Frank report. I believe this is on page 104 in it. And yeah, I know, maybe I'm weird, but I, I used to read the World Almanac every year for fun. This kind of information... To me, I mean, it helps you better understand how the world actually works. This right here is great precious metals related data. It's based on responses from 620 private bankers and wealth advisors managing more than 3.3 trillion of wealth for ultra high net worth investment clients. The survey ran during October and November 2019. That's pre-pandemic fiat currency bailout explosions. The following question was asked. On average, how are your clients' investment portfolios allocated to the following asset classes? Now you could read all the fine details here, but if you look over at the precious metals gold section, you can see how pathetically tiny the highest net worth or position in their underlying fiat currency positions, especially if their underlying fiat currency positions really start to go wrong. I mean, you imagine if the fiat currencies really go wrong, these people are going to freak. Uh, Remember, too, that they are likely positioned in unsecured, underperforming ETFs like SLV, SIVR, GLD, IAU, COMEX futures, etc. It's uh, totally different than actual physical bullion. They and possibly their money managers are totally clueless to the risks they're actually running by using their allocations in that way. But hey, they're going to learn the hard way eventually. Moving on, remember that this was all answered pre-pandemic fiat currency monetary base explosions have happened since lord knows that they probably moved up their aggression into going into precious metals when they were asked then about allocation changes to come even pre-pandemic estate managers were already pretty bullish precious metals so likely by now they've become many whales of their peers so to finish this this video here Let's have a brief look at Credit Suisse's 2020 wealth report to corroborate some of the stuff we've been looking at. And also, we're going to take a look back about a decade ago to better understand how fiat financialization has helped the uber wealthy. Here, according to their data, there are now likely 90,000 U.S. states with over 50 million in net worth. China has over 20,000 estates in that strata of fiat Fed note measured wealth. Let's roll the clock back one decade at global fiat when global fiat qe was still pretty young at the time here you can see the chinese um you know the chinese have obviously uh, the uber wealthy have obviously exploded almost four times uh while the u.s has nearly tripled you know, its high net worth investor class i mean i just a question out loud when you look at this i mean do you think the middle classes of both these countries have respectively quadrupled and or nearly tripled over the same time frame I mean, I'll let you answer that one. Now, let's simply imagine the fiat currencies that we're using at all these places really start going wrong. I mean, obviously, we've talked about it on this channel multiple times. The record level debts that are likely not going to get paid in real value terms have got to be defaulted on one way or another. And it's more than likely that most of it will come through currency devaluations. So to see silver nearly double in price by the end of the year or gold trend toward 2500 an ounce toward the end of the year. I mean, you would think that many of these uh, 150,000 uber wealthy estates will likely start moving heavily into precious metal allocations if they see that kind of momentum. So let's say you have uh, 40 million in fiat Fed notes in liquid net worth and you move 20% into bullion, as we discussed earlier. Let's say you're very aggressive and you want silver, just straight up. In silver terms, that's 8 million into silver bullion and 
like right now that's basically this 288,000 ounces of silver bullion in 1,000 ounce bar form that's basically nine metric tons of bullion now there's about 443 of these reportedly currently sitting in comics warehouse depositories total in terms of the registered available silver bullion and this could literally be spoken for in a matter of months now i'm going to end this video with a click through to a video that we've made in july 2020 so at the very end of the video if you want to see this just click through and you'll see it the most salient points were not provided by me in this video but actually by former ft financial times and now bloomberg's own john authors in his article at summer 2020 he and his editors basically tell the world a gold squeeze is building so my opinion it remains the same the ongoing silver squeeze leads to the eventual gold squeeze physical bullion full gold silver bullion withdrawals from the questionable comic system are required and will build with high net worth family offices to ensure that they don't get screwed in the end if they don't know what they're doing in bullion they can of course reach out to me for a simple consultation but it's really simple uh don't keep your bullion in the comic system if you want to own your bullion outright pull it and store it in your own direct secure non-bank storage facility that's all for now you bullion whales out there as always take great care of yourselves those that you love if you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you think and which topics you want to hear more about.